Good morning. Oh, boy, you yeah, got your morning me. look on, aren't you? You got the anointing on. <laughs> She's dressed up in the anointing in the presence of God. Okay. Oh, I hope you all get dressed up. <laughs> this is so good. How about a double portion? <gasps> oh, more. Yes, we, we <laughs> share <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Welcome to Holy Spirit Sands <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Sunday morning. <laughs> Jesus. Coming into the presence of the Lord is a holy, holy, holy thing. And we thank you, Lord, that your presence is here and that we can come into your presence. It's a holy, holy, holy thing. So, Bruce and Cheryl, I can just ask you to come on up and rock the, or the worship team. Today is all, what the Lord has put on my heart for today is all about kingdom or dominion. And maybe they're the same thing, or maybe they're not. Maybe you don't understand king, the kingdom of God, or maybe you don't understand the word dominion. But we're going to look at that today. But the kingdom of God, behold, behold the Lamb of God. 
who brings the kingdom of God, but also takes away the sins of the world. And it's all about Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. And where are you tabernacling? Tabernacling is where are you being and spending that time with Abba Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Where are you spending that time? So we're going to go right into worship. And as we go into worship, I'm going to read out of Matthew chapter 5. And, and Jesus, seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountain. And I've been at this place. Went up on the mountain and he said to, and he seated to this disciple, he seated his disciples, and he, and, his, and he opened his mouth. He, in other words, the voice of God spoke, and this is what he taught. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of, he kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger, and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And that was our prayer, when we our pre-service prayer that was coming out as uh, as, as we were praying, and 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 uh, Cheryl was bringing that, and Bruce was bringing that, and it was coming that blessed those who are hunger. If you're coming in here, if you're tuning in for being hungry and to be in the presence of God, it says, "Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness." For they shall be filled. Be filled this day. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure at heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is invading earth in each and every one of us. So let's worship him in spirit, and in truth. This is called The Fear of the Lord, Isaiah 11.
but 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 I saw so and as we sort of asked a couple more questions of the Lord and the Lord. So is you know who is he here in this place? Because I was seeing him both in our home and here. Well oh warrior and king, but I saw the warrior and king at home. I saw him here was predominantly the king, the royal king. And so now as singing the song, can can you see can I see him? What I was seeing was it was like it was like the you know like his girl filling the temple, but it was like it, just the hem of his garment that 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 and it was swirling, and swirling, and it was high, and then it was swirling, and it came and filled this one. So can we see him? Yes, we can. And so I would encourage, I would encourage each one, I would encourage each one to take that moment and ask the Lord to show you, to see him, where you are, right here, right now, just to see him. He is always happy to see you. He's always happy to see me. So ask him to show you that his glory and his presence and his royal presence as he's coming this time. Only 
Stacy Lunsford, who's, uh, there was a whole group of young teenagers that were in Morocco on a humanitarian outreach, a Christian outreach in Morocco right here. They were there in the earthquake. And we prayed and continue to pray for the safety of all those who were there and for all the humanitarian aid that's going in every nation that is watching this right now to bring uh, provision that they need. Stacy says all the team are okay. They're all in the U.S. Embassy right now. Lord, Kingdom Harvest Alliance, Kingdom Harvest Alliance that uh, we are a part of around the world here with Chuck Pierce and all those that are part of the Kingdom Harvest Alliance. There's many that are standing together in unity in the harvest. But again, I'm going to, this, this particular, this service today is all about Kingdom it's all about dominion. It's all about tabernacling. Because this is the month of Yule where all the children of Israel were in the desert. And they, at the back of the room here, we have a, what they call a Sukkoth. 
and they were in tents. And God told them to build these tents or whatever you might want to call them. And a lot of them were just put together by sticks and cloth and, and, uh, and they invited the presence of God to come in. And with the beautiful part back then, if you notice that there was a pillar of fire and a cloud by day, but a pillar of fire by night. So what the Lord did in the dwelling places of the children of Israel before they got before they went into the promised land. He met them, every one of them, in their dwelling place. And there was a light that were in the, that was in the dwelling place that was from heaven, not by any lamps lit. God's presence came in and lit up the sukkahs. Lift and lit up the houses of the dwelling places of God. And he will do it in your dwelling place. Regardless how difficult we're going through. So this, I'll read this one more. And Leslie's got something. And it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. All those who are mourning right now shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for she, they, they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled, filled with the Holy Spirit. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure at heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, Bless you, Billy. Bless you, Pastor Sunil Malak, in, in uh, ministering in Punjab right now, where there's so much difficulties. Bless all our teams in in Pakistan that are going through much persecution, much persecution and death, and the destroying of their homes. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Persecution is all, all in all, we need, to be, we need to know where we stand in faith. We need to understand our beliefs in the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus. And we need to be in covenant community during these times of persecution. Because they will continue. And as they can continue, we shall persevere. And as they persevere, the Holy Spirit shall pour out upon all flesh as it is prophesied in Joel. This is the time of that. And it's going to come through a time of persecution. So just, it is going to be normal. This is normal, act, this is the normal activation. The divine nature of God being actualized and activated in this time and season. Those who are righteous will be persecuted. So we need to know who we are and to receive them in unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness, unmeasured acceptance, walking covenant, but not come into an unholy alliance with them. Keep yourself pure. Okay, let's mm -hmm. So, you know, we've been, you know, over just as we've been talking about and coming into this time of, you know, the fall feasts and tabernacle in the booths and the fall festivals and and really the the king, the king, the king's been in his field and he's entering in to, you know, he's been entering into this holy of holies and and for us to make this temple that place that can um, make that room for our king, that this temple will be that dwelling place for the king and to enter into. That we, <laughs> yeah. So we, you know, it's, uh, although things even, you know, for, for various ones like these folks in the different countries that we get the news of, it's not new. It's not new. 
in the times of the world. It's, yeah, it's new to us in this time that we live in, or newer. But uh, I'm just, I am going to just read a little bit of the Seek First the Kingdom is the, from the Israel teaching letter, uh, Bridges for Peace, and, and Seeking First the Kingdom. And that's what we, we do. We want to be sure we're seeking first his kingdom. And it talks about, you know, how many times in this day and age and whatever country we live in, we can be so darn frustrated with our governments. And, um, you know, so, you know, we tend to despair over, over which direction our government wants to take our nation. And then chaos erupts, pandemic strikes, poverty increases, home price, everything is looking really bad. Um, and then we expect our governments to have an answer. Yeah. Well, the real answer lies with the authority of the government of heaven. Amen. That's where the real answer is, not in our local governments, our nation's governments. And then how long, you know, in each one of our areas, um, <laughs> you know, and even in the, whether it's in the States or Canada, wherever around the world, we can see riots in the streets, looting, violence, wars, persecution, the persecution of Christians that we just mentioned, and the anti-Semitism and an unbridled rage. How long, how we long for that righteous king to arise and bring calm to our nations. Although today many kings have a, like a largely ceremonial role, it's um, when we read through the books of kings in the Bible and so on and so forth, we see that the kings could be righteous or they could be evil. And the Bible often says of these evil kings, he did evil in the sight of the Lord. So, how much more for our King Jesus to reign and rule in us? Do we need to have that fear of the Lord? The good kings, conversely, pleased the Lord because they did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Like the three times when kings had ruled with a heavy hand, Rehoboam, for example, in First Kings 12, um, you know, and it's just like today. When an evil king was in power, the people suffered. When a righteous king ruled the kingdom, um, then the people, people thrived, the subjects thrived. So whatever way it is, righteous leadership or unrighteous, Every leader expects loyalty from their subjects. And every kingdom or nation has a code of behavior and an expectation of that loyalty and allegiance. Those who choose not to align with themselves and instead act against the kingdom can be charged with treason or put into prison or all manner of different unpleasant things um, and that could be viewed by that ruler is extremely a gregarious crime against the state or against the, the leaders. What is allegiance? What is an allegiance to a leader or leadership or a government? There's a, there's a site called yourdictionary.com, and it, uh, it defines allegiance as loyalty or devotion to a cause or a person, loyalty to some cause, nation, or ruler, giving a promise to be loyal or the action of actually being loyal and on someone's side. Yet there's this time of Jesus. So even in Jesus' day, in Yeshua's day, the people were ruled by Rome, and the Roman leadership demanded that total allegiance. And some of those laws were against what the Bible says. It's like we're living in the Roman times. 
um, some of these laws are definitely against what the Bible says. So, just as today, when many of us, many people do struggle to submit to leadership, that is an ungodly leadership. So, it's no different than Jesus' day. Amen. During that chaotic and challenging time, Jesus, and when he was with his disciples, he often spoke about the kingdom of God. In his words and through his actions, he constantly drew attention to God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So, for example, even in the Lord's Prayer that he taught his disciples how to pray. I was going to go there, so I don't have to know. When his words are... His words are, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Hadi Hamas, say hey. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we find that in Luke chapter 11, verse 2, and in Matthew 6, verses 8b to 10. God is our king. And this month, in Israel particularly, it is like, as I mentioned, the celebration of the fall feasts. And one of the themes in this particular holiday that's celebrated is the kingship of God. Amen. So we contrast the human king with God our king, and you come up with a very different picture totally. Our God, our King, is always righteous and always good. And He is looking out for the very best for His loyal subjects, His followers, His people. Our King, our God, is a God of mercy. And He's also a God of judgment. As Isaiah thirty three twenty two says, For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. He will save us. We might try to save our own skin, but it's the Lord when we subject ourselves to him who saves us. And throughout the whole Bible, God is, God is shown to be and referred to as the king, both as to Christians and to Jewish people. He is referred to God as king and he's, speaks about his kingdom all the way through. Psalm 47 is an example. For the Lord Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is king of all the earth. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. And that's referring to Psalm 47, chapter 2 and uh, 6 to 8. So even in Judaism, it's customary to bless God numerous times a day. For those of us who are Jesus followers, for Jesus followers, it, it should be customary for us to bless our God and worship him and praise his name several times a day. In the Jewish customs, the, the prayers that begin with, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. So on Yom Kippur, or the uh, Day of Atonement that is celebrated, and on other, other of those high holy days that are recognized, God is addressed as King in a prayer which repeatedly references his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So should our language not complete you know, repeatedly reference his kingdom and his kingship. The Yom Kippur is the, it's a prayer of repentance and petition. Every day, every day we can come before our king and whatever he may show us, 
Let this be the time of our repentance. And then we can petition him. And then, you know, I'm not the expert on all of this stuff. Brock's much better at this than I am, of course. Um, the prayer in the song that's called the Avenue Mel... Mel see, I can't even say it properly. Melkinu. Our Father, our King. And that prayer is, you know, is found... It is found in, you know, amongst some of the Jewish teaching. The Kingdom of God. In the time of Jesus or Yeshua, the people prayed for deliverance from the Romans. Well... Don't we pray from the deliverance of our government or the deliverance out of this world altogether, like God, get us out of here kind of thing? Um, <laughs> but, and they assumed and they believed that the kingdom of God, you know, was going to be the freedom, like Jesus' disciples believed that their freedom was coming from the from being released under the tyranny of the, Romish, Rome, the Roman uh, ways. And then, with Jesus, they said to him, you know, they were asking him. They, they sat under his teaching, and they heard, and they wanted to hear from him. Like, they expected Jesus to be the one that was going to, in that hour, in that time, to free all of Israel from this oppression. And then after the resurrection, they very plainly asked him, Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Acts 1, 6. But he had a bigger plan, a much bigger plan. So when we want to take on the yoke of heaven, that means to live according to the, to the rules of God's kingdom. Jesus showed us through his life and his actions the way the kingdom of God should operate. So we need to follow his pattern, not the pattern of others, people we admire, people we set on that, ministers or whoever we set on that little platform or that idol spot. Our life and actions need to be modeled after Jesus and his kingdom and his principles. And interestingly enough, when um, when that phrase in the Lord's Prayer, it uh, it's, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, it marries both thoughts in one sentence. He, he healed people, and he delivered the oppressed, and he told them that, that this was evidence that this was the kingdom of God, and it was here. It was right here, right now. And in Luke eleven twenty one it says, But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. So Jesus told his followers that the kingdom of God had great value and should be searched for like a person searching for that lost coin. It's so valuable. There are so many benefits to being part of God's kingdom. But seek first, again, we reference Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added to you. Throughout all the scriptures, there is a theme of blessing for those who seek God and live in the way he is ordained. And similarly, there is also negative consequences for those who choose to rebel against him. And so we have a choice every single day. Am I going to choose life? Am I going to choose death? I'm going to choose life by seeking his kingdom. If I choose to follow the kingdom of darkness or those things, and I choose to rebel against him, then it's a different result there are consequences but he is a just God and he is a father who loves and loves and keeps on loving and because of the blood and all that was accomplished on the cross then we can come to him at any moment at any time and know we just surrender to him
we surrender to him and he does not hold that any of that stuff against us so let's look to our Jesus model Amen. and his kingdom and following after his ways and it's an everyday adventure seeking him sorry I kind of just well I you've got uh, 50% of what I was going to preach on so alrighty then Give me five. There. Give me five. We're, we're more than halfway. Yeah, there. we're. we're we, you, <laughs> you got something else there? Nope, not right now. Not right now? Nope. It's good. Well, again, um, for those that are online and those that are here, uh, we thank you for your giving of your tithes and your offerings because they, they, they come in and we advance the kingdom of God. So bless you for that. Mm. And uh, some people may not realize that we have. Envelopes at the back, and we have a have one of those um, automatic things you can hit. What do you call that? Debit machine. Debit right? machine that you can use, or you can go on our website. Mm -hmm. And it's quite interesting how many people just go to the website and hit it. Yeah, and options there. from around the world. Yeah, we didn't know from around the world that that, that it was it could be used. Pakistan. So therefore, <laughs> other nations can also give. Right from help, the website, we didn't know that. And to look after. To look after the things and, and bless, yeah, not we, only bless the Lord, yeah. but bless His people. We, we thought anywhere. when we set that up, it would be for, for those in the United States that, uh, you know, Patricia Simmons was wanting to, and uh, so we set that up, and so other things have happened. So, so there, there, if you want to give unto this ecclesia, this church, it's very easy. And if you want to give unto the ministry, it's very easy. It's just. Yeah, there so is. so the choice is, you know, the choice Where is... Where does the money go? Well, we can address that we'll address after the after. service is over, if you okay. like. Well, we will address that afterwards for yeah. you, if you'd like to hear that. Um, yeah. So what what the choices can be is for this house and the local area ministry, you know, the giving choice is on the website or via, you know, it's Holy Spirit Sands. If it's by check, whatever, it's to Holy Spirit Sands. If it's to that money stays locally here, right? Yeah, here. and it and it's but if for missions or the outreach or to um, for any of the for those the orphans where you know that type of thing, then it's you know it's the Resurrection Life or the yeah. RLM yeah. Um, choice that you have. So it's very easy. And you can to direct do that. it if you want it to go to the orphanage in Kenya for uh, Pastor John Amandi. Absolutely, we do that. Yeah. If you want it to go to Bangladesh for our ministry in Bangladesh, we can do that, or for yeah. India. And out of the 53 nations in Africa, we're operating in over half of them. And uh, each one of them has different needs. So uh, that is your ch that's your choice, mm -hmm. okay? But we, uh, we deal with things locally as well. Yep. And, so, hey, you can never give God. So, yep. you know, yeah, he, so. always, he always will um, bless, his, he will yeah, bless so. those who... So yeah, so if, you wanna, if you're in Canada, we can give you a tax sheet. If you're not, we can't. So that's the way it works, yep. based on CRA. Yep. So okay. in that, that was the uh, segue to what I preached on last week was Jabbok, J-A-B-B-O-C-K. And we're going to kind of flow with that a little bit because um, we're in the month of Yule, which is heaven's calendar of the king is in the field. In other words, it's harvest time. And back then in Israel, uh, harvest time. So the king was in the field. Uh, helping with the harvest. He was off his throne and put on his work clothes and uh, was there shoulder to shoulder with uh, those who were bringing the harvest in. And uh, that's what's happening here in, in Carberry, uh, Western Canada. There's a harvest going on and uh, the king is in the field. In many places in Canada, uh, there's a bumper crop. In other places in Canada, you know, it's there. Have, there's difficulties. So it's like, it's like that around the world. And uh, so those are the things that uh, um, happen. And, uh, but what Jabak is about is last week I talked about you, 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 uh, when, when, some, when you're coming to be filled by the Holy Spirit, it's, it's probably a good thing to be emptied out of those things that are in your flesh so that you can be filled of the things of heaven and the Holy Spirit. So what Jabak was all about is when uh, uh, before Israel 
you know, Jacob uh, had to cross a river. And, and this is the time when that happened. And there's other things that happen in the history of God that happens at the same time. It's also the same time of Samson. Same situation. That's what I want to talk about today. Is that um, over, the, over the years, in this particular time frame, um, the, <laughs> God chooses certain times for us to be emptied out and to be filled up. Okay? And uh, it's, it's, if you're really open to be filled up today, you, me, you need to empty yourself out of those things that maybe you're carrying that, are, uh, that the Lord says, give, give me that pain or give me, uh, give me that discomfort or, uh, or repent of that sin or turn away from that sin so I can fill you up with the righteousness of God. I can fill you up with, with the fruits of the Spirit. I can fill you up with those things that you're so hungry for. But get, let's get rid of the other stuff so we can fill you up with more. So, um, in in Judges, uh, I'm, it's as I say, uh, everybody kind of knows the story of Samson. You know, like he he was uh, he was from the tribe of Gad, which is this particular month. And this particular month is all about uh, Yeshua Teshua, which is the Lord God, my mighty strength. Okay, so it's kind of cool that uh, Samson was from the tribe of Gad, and it says in Scripture, and if I have time, I'll go to it, but uh, it says that one person, a normal person from Gad, was such a great warrior, one could take on a hundred. If he was an exceptional warrior, he could take on a thousand. So Samson was one of those exceptional warriors from the tribe of Gad that had no trouble on taking on a thousand. And uh, we're going to read that in Judges. The other thing that uh, happened with Jabbok uh, you know, the emptying out place. Isn't it kind of interesting that when we go to uh, Judges 16, and where I, where I talked uh, last week uh, about uh, Jacob, it's exactly the same spot. It's the same spot where this is happening. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read here in Judges uh, chapter 15. And, uh, and it... It's, it's a good story, and it's good for the kids that are here. And it, and it says, after a while, in, in, in the time of wheat harvest, okay, in 15, so in the time of wheat harvest, so it's saying the time of Yule, the time of harvest. So we know it, it's, it's this particular time. And it's the same thing that was happening with Jacob. It was this, the king is in the field. So uh, it happened that Samson visited his wife with a young goat and said, let me go into my, in, into my wife into her room, but her father would not permit it. So you can read through the story there. Um, and then what happened was, in verse 4, then Samson went out and caught 300 foxes. How fast do you have to be to catch 300 foxes? Mm. Has any of you have ever caught a fox? Those things are quick. But he caught three. Can you imagine the, not only the strength that he had, but the wisdom he had, but how the quickness, how you could catch 300 foxes? Sheesh. My goodness. And he took the torch and turned the foxes tail to tail, and he torched it between each tail. So what happens here is when he set the torches of fire, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines. In other words, in the harvest time, but it was in the, it was in the Philistines or the enemy's camp. And he burned up, um, he burned up both the, the shocks and the standing grain, as well as the vineyards and the olive groves. Well, the enemy, the Philistines, didn't like his, him destroying their harvest. So he says, who has done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timonite. Because he, has, he had taken his wife and given her to be a companion, and it goes on to the Philistines. And, and, and so you can read a little further, and it, and it says, well, you know, the the Philistines knew that they couldn't capture Samson. They've tried. He was too, too strong. So in, in, if we look at here uh, in, in, in verse 10, and it says, And the men of Judah said, in other words, the Philistines went to Judah, which is the tribe, uh, you know, uh, which is still uh, the tribe of Judah, uh, to capture Samson. In other words, 
Because the enemy couldn't capture Samson, the enemy went and went to an, uh, a, a, another p- group of people that were in relationship with the tribe of Gad because Judah and Gad are brothers. So what the enemy did was trying to turn one brother against the other brother through manipulation. So what the Philistines did is they told the tribe of Judah, the line of Judah, which is uh, one of the, uh, uh, from the, the seed of Jesse, where Jesus came, uh, came through that line, is that they said, you have to capture Samson or we're going to destroy you. They used, what, what do you call, what, 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 is that, what is that system when you do that? What, is, are, what, 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 what are the Philistines, what is the enemy doing to, to Judah, the brother? Are they coercing him? Oh, yeah. are, are they manipulating? Oh, yeah. Did they want to do it? No, they didn't. You can read in the scripture, they didn't want to do it, but they were forced to do it because there was a gun to their head. So, and... and I, I, I just want you to understand uh, how great Samson was, not only in, in strength and wisdom and quickness, but in compassion and in humility. Even though he could have wiped out all the, his brothers, it says that, anyway, he could have taken all the brothers from Judah and taken them on and beat them up. But he chose not to. Okay, let's just let's look at this. And he says, He says, why have you come up against us? So they answered, we have come up to arrest Samson, to do him as he has done to us. So in other words, the Philistines are coming unto Judah. And then it says, then 3,000 men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock in Etam and said to Samson, do you not know that the Philistines that rule over us, in other words, the, the government that rules over us, there's 3,000 of us, and we have to come and take you. And they knew that Santa could take all 3,000. And what happens here? And he said to them, as they did to me, I have done to them. In verse 12, but they said to him, we have come down to arrest you, that we may deliver you into the hand of the Philistines. Well, isn't that interesting? I, I want you to know if Samson was cocky, he would have said, okay, let him come. I know I could take all those guys, those uncircumcised Philistines. I can do that. David did it. I can do it. In other words, then Samson said to them, swear to me that you will not kill me. And they swore. And he says, okay, bind me up. I'll go. Talk about a person of humility. Bind me up and I will go. I will humble myself unto you and you can take me and deliver me into the enemy. So no harm comes to you. I understand what they're doing. I understand how they are coercing you. There's another word. What's another word? Manipulating. What's another word? Intimidating. Bullying. Is that happening today between nations, between people, between people across the block? I'm just saying... Samson put himself, he said, I understand that you're being bullied. I don't want you to be bullied. Take me. I will go peaceably. Just don't kill me, brother. Just take me to the enemy's camp. I'll look after him. And they put his, whatever, however you want to bind me up and whatever kind of ropes you bind me up, that's not going to keep me from what God's plan is in my life in bondage. He knew the heart of the Father. He knew who, who, where his strength lied. Yeshua, Teshua, the God of mighty strength, was in him. Take me. Just don't kill me. Just and swear. And he believed them. Okay, take me. I'll go see the king of wherever the king is and wherever the enemy is. Take me into the enemy. Because my God is greater than any enemy. And I know who I am. Here I am, Lord, send me. Bound up 
intimidated, bullied, it doesn't matter, the Lord is going to bring you through. So, and, 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 and this is the important part. And when he came to Lehi, say Lehi. Lehi. Okay, I want you to take this, both hands. Take your hands. Take your hands. Take your hands out there, Lehi. Okay, take your hands and put them on your cheek. Lehi is cheek. Mm. <laughs> Lehi is cheek. Mm, Where God's hands goes on your cheek, so does your head and your body go. Mm-hmm. And you have to look into the eyes of God when He puts His hands on your cheek. If you are going to resist or turn away from God, How can you turn away from the strength of God's hand and say, I don't want to look in your eyes. I don't want any part of you. When he says, I love you, son. And he takes you on the cheeks. Lehi. The Philistines came shouting against him. And then the Spirit of the Lord came mighty upon him. And the ropes that were on his arms became like flax and burned. The spirit of the living God from the inside out burned those new ropes off. No, just as we are worshiping today, the spirit, nothing is going to keep you bound up when the spirit of the living God and the fire comes upon that. Whether it's iron, steel, titanium, cobalt, whatever it is, nothing is hotter than the all-consuming God. Hell is not hotter. Than the all-consuming God, I can tell you that. So let's look at this. And the Lord came mightily upon him, and the ropes out of his arms became like flax and burned, <laughs> and burned with fire, and his bonds broke loose from his hands. Do you think there were burn marks on his on his wrists when that happened? You know that same burning bush. Do you think if you <laughs> you think you would put your hand in there it would get burnt? This is a holy fire. That burns the things and the dross of the spirit. Not the flesh of man. Holy fire. He found, and this is it, he found the fresh jawbone of a donkey. Reached out his hand and took it and killed a thousand men with it. This is a ram's horn. The jawbone of a donkey is similar I've seen one. I've saw an illustration. I want to get one. But it is hideous. I want you to know it's a hideous thing. A weapon. This is a, this is a weapon. But the jawbone of an ass or a donkey, when you see it freshly, and how he would have done it, I, I, I've seen how they, they do that. And where, where the jawbone is, it's long and elongated. And where the teeth are, okay, that's interesting. What they would do with it is they would wrap it with leather and they would hold it. But he didn't wrap this thing with leather. He just grabbed it. But I've seen it as a weapon where they, they take the jawbone and they wrap it with leather. And guess, guess what is at, on the top of the jawbone of, of a donkey's ass, of an ass? It's like a circular, it's like a huge circular weapon. It's formidable and it's fresh and it would have been sharp it would have been sharp you can look it up so it interesting it happened at lehi <laughs> cheek watch this god god does this and i'm going to go back to, to uh, jacob at the and, and show you that it's exactly the same place where this happened and you know i said well that's a coincidence not with god it's not so he broke loose and he broke loose from bondage and the first thing after he broke loose from bondage he was able to grab down a weapon that God gave him and he killed a thousand people with it. What weapon is God going to put in your hand to take out if one can take out a thousand and two can take out 10,000 he is going to put the holy spirit the holy spirit the and the of sword God. of God in, in your hand that is greater than any enemy and speak as as, as Pastor Ralph was speaking on the armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6. 
yesterday, and he's, he's part three. He's going to go part four because I was there, and, and we extended it to a part four. Okay. Sorry, but it's actually better. Yeah. Uh, Bishop John Kunkun really loved it. He says it's really, he was looking forward to part four. <laughs> so in looking at this, he says a fresh jawbone of, of a donkey and, took, and kill, killed a thousand. A thousand of who? The Philistines. That was just the start of it. And then, Jans, then Samson said in verse 16, with the jawbone of the donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of the donkey, he had slain a thousand men. So that, that was already part of, the, of his profile being from the tribe of Gad. One awesome warrior from the tribe of Gad could take a thousand. Just a mediocre, mediocrity of a warrior from Gad could take on a hundred. Can you imagine how, what that tribe of Gad was as warriors? <clears throat> Their women must have been tough too, eh? Anyway, and so to it, when he had finished uh, speaking, then, then he threw the jawbone from his hand and called the place Ramath Lehi. Ramath Lehi. So we know Jabak is emptying out. And this is the same place, the exact same place of Jabak. He's in the same place. And it's a hollow. I've been there. It's a hollow. <laughs> and... Uh, it's, 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 it's called the cheek place, okay, the cheek, and the ramath, okay, let's read a little further. And then, he, uh, and then he became very thirsty, so he cried out to the Lord and said, well, don't we know in scripture it says springs of living water will pour out? Didn't, haven't we seen it that when Moses needed water out of a rock, it came? Well, in this particular, uh, and, and he hit the rock twice, don't hit the rock twice, just speak it and it comes here, he's sitting there, he's crying out. He's just been in a war. He's tired. He's drop, he drops his weapon and says, Oh, God, I'm thirsty. Would you fill me up with the springs of living water? Have you been through a battle and you need to be, be rejuvenated in the springs of living water and natural water? Yes. If you're going into battle, it's going to happen. Your natural body still needs water. It still needs nourishment. But your spiritual body... Person needs to be filled up. And then it says here, you have given this, uh, it says in verse 18, then he became very thirsty, so he cried out to the Lord and said, you have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant, and now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised people? So God split the hollow place. This is the same place that Jacob was. He split the hollow place. And in that, and that is Lehi, the, Lehi, the jawbone. He says, I split the cheek and water came out of it and, <laughs> and he drank from the cheek. And his spirit re returned and he was revived. From that point on, they called it En-Hakor, E-N-H-A-K-K-O-R-E. And unto this day, that water continues to flow. You can go there and fill up your cup. And when we go to Israel in May next year, with my God our, willing, <laughs> yeah, we're going to go be going with uh, Pastor Ray McLean in May. I want to go there and fill my cup up and drink from there. But in the meantime, I'm just I'm saying. Yeah. Meantime, what? We fill our cup up everything. I know, I know. With I just put a water. plug in for our trip, oh, our 50th anniversary. Trip, okay. That my, our brother, yeah. Doug, Brenda, maybe some other people will join us. Yeah. Ray, Ray McLean says there's room on the bus. Anyway, <laughs> and, he's, and, and, it says, and it says in verse 20, and he judged Israel 20, you know, so Samson became a judge of Israel for 20 years, in the days of Philistine. Now, if you can take your Bible and just flip it back to uh, Genesis uh, chapter 32. <clears throat> chapter 32, verse 22. This is what I taught last week. So I'm bringing it, bringing it together. Okay. This is, where, this is where Jacob was wrestling with God. And verse 22, and he... 
He arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the fort of Jabbok. In other words, he crossed over the ford. He crossed over that, that river, that Jabbok, that place of emptying out. And when Jacob was left alone, oh, pardon me, and he, took, and he took, verse 23, and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent, and sent over what he had. Who was he, well, who was he sending all his, all his possessions? His wife and his children and everything. Who was he sending them to? He was sending them to who? His brother. His brother who had, stole, who had his inheritance stolen. And he said, I'm going to send everything I have and maybe my brother will not kill me. In other words, he didn't have the, uh, he did not have what was, um, he didn't have the integrity to face up to his brother face to face. He, was, he sent his wives, he sent everything. He says, here they are, uh, before you kill them, kill me, you can kill them or you can have them. That's what he did at the place of emptying out. <clears throat> and then Jacob was left alone, and, the, and it says, a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. And we know all about, and, and now when he saw, what, saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket in his hip, and that socket in Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. So, it's, so that place of Jabbok, um, that place of emptying out is also lined up to the place of Lehi, the, the cheek. And we're, that, we're in the hollow of that where God split it, the rock, and living water came out. Springs of living water. <sighs> in verse 30 it says, So Jacob called, called the name of, the, of this place Phineal, and I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. In other words, this, I, in that same area, I've seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Where Samson named it the place of, I, for drinking, for being refreshed and revived. So God places, puts natural places, but also spiritual places for us to be emptied out, but also to be filled up, to be face to face with him. That's where I'm going, to be face-to-face -face with him, regardless of what the adversity is. God wants to be face-to-face. -face. He wants to revive us. He wants to refresh us. He wants to put us into a place where we thirst no more. Mm -hmm. And so, ah, praise the Lord. So we thirst no more. So Matthew, going back to Matthew chapter 10, <clears throat> the 12 apostles about the kingdom. We're talking about kingdom. What kingdom are you in? What are your adversities? What is the dominion that you, God has given you? What is dominion? This place, I, I love what Ralph said last week, the dominion of Canada. That's what it was named. Dominion of Canada. From coast to coast, from sea to sea, the dominion of Canada. To the north as well. So here we have the 12 apostles in verse Matthew chapter 10. And when he had called the 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease. God, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, empowered his disciples, empowered them so that they would walk in apostles, in the signs and wonders and miracles, as he's doing for each and every one of us who come to a place of being emptied out and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Coming to that place of Lehi, of where the cheek is, so he can put his hands on our cheek and look us straight in the eyes and say, I love you. And if you need deliverance, he can look into your eyes and deliverance will come. If you want it to be, or you can run away. So it, it, then it says, it talks the, about the names of all the disciples there. But I'm just going to go verse 5. And then, and then the 12, and it says, these 12, these 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, do not, do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not 
enter the city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so you, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And today you need to go out and preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you might say it says the 12 disciples. That includes all 12. Even the one who betrayed Jesus was given the opportunity under the power and authority to preach the word of God yeah. that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he chose to be part of the 12. Jesus accepted him, but he still chose to betray Jesus. And Jesus knew it was coming. Judas was hung on the Judas tree at a, at a place in Jerusalem where it's called a certain valley of death. Do not place yourself in that same Judas tree that only overlooks the shadow, shadow of death in the valley. Repent and turn unto the Lord God. He has called you to preach the good news. Even as it says in, in Acts chapter 9, 15, to uh, Saul, he says, he was a chosen vessel by God, even though he was persecuting the Christians. He was a chosen vessel by God, but he, cho but he repented. And God used him mightily. If you're doing things against the kingdom of God, if you're doing things against the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're doing things against what the Father in heaven wants you to do, repent of that and turn from your evil ways and continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. At Resurrection Life, we're all about unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness, unmeasured acceptance, and walking in covenant relationship with our Father. <laughs> and does that get tested every day? Oh, yes. yes. Sometimes it's hour by hour. <clears throat> yes, please. So in verse 7, it, uh, it says, And as you go preaching, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. In kingdom business. Mm -hmm. In the dominion where God has placed you in whatever nation. In the ecclesia of whatever city or hamlet you're at. Be about kingdom business. Be about the kingdom of God. So in closing... I'm going to borrow, once again, a decree and um, from Brenda Kuhneman. It's the purpose and divine, or destiny, sorry, purpose and destiny revived. And today we can declare and we can say before our God, today that, <laughs> that Lord, you see our destiny and calling, and we will see our destiny and calling through the eyes of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We say, Lord God, that we will each of us see our purpose with faith. And we declare that all clouded vision and blindness that would try to prevent us from seeing your, the bright future that is before us is destroyed in Jesus' name. And Lord, we can prophesy and say that your barren and our barren season, wherever that might be, is becoming fruitful and becomes fruitful. <coughs> we declare and we say that everything that each one of us is called to accomplish shall become manifest Every prophetic word from heaven shall bear fruit. We command that all gloominess is to clear, and we say that bright days are before <coughs> each and every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. And our scripture reference is Jeremiah 29, 11, where he says, and for the, I know the plans that I have for you. The plans, that's what God says. Plans for peace and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. So we have that hope in Jesus. And if there's so many things that the enemy wants to try to do to bring discouragement, and some of those keys I think every one of us in this room has had to experience, um, 
you can use that discouragement to as a loss of purpose. We we don't when the circumstances around each any one of us is to paint a negative picture. And each one of us really deeply wants to know what we are called by God to be doing if there's any doubt with the specific <coughs> gifts and unique talents. Three important factors to take a look at when it comes to your calling, your purpose, and your destiny. First, if God planned it for you, then it's going to happen. He says it. He makes it happen. As long as we're, you know, <coughs> we, need, we need to cooperate with him. Um, if God planned it for you, it will happen. So don't allow that enemy's discouragement to dissuade you or I. Second of all, know that God has given you and I each unique gifts and talents. We're not all cookie-cutter people. We're unique. There's only one of us. Many people say, well, thank goodness for that. Um, but we've been all given those unique gifts and talents, and th that very thing that we are destined to do will typically surround people's talents. So be yourself, and don't try to be or to become something you or I are not. God is going to make it so that you, he will enable you to do what you love and what you're good at doing. It doesn't have to be a struggle. If it's hard work, then it's not what God would have you to do. And you don't have to do everything. He's got people to do those other things. And last but not least, remember, it's God's timing. His timing. It's not the timing we want necessarily, but it's his timing. These humans, that this, the human temples we live in, seem to want to live within our time frame. But there's so much more involved, the bigger picture. God knows them much better than we will or ever will. We just have to trust Him for His time. So we can each of us take courage and be strengthened with that assurance that God has a really good plan for you and I, for our lives, and for a future that is filled with hope, not despair. So, Father in heaven, we just want to bless your holy name. We thank you that you are a God. Lord, you were always so happy to see us. You're never cross with us. You're always so happy to see us. So, Lord, your plans for our future, they're for good and not for evil. Lord, we choose to accept that and believe your word and who you are. Believe and, and come to know who you are, that you are, you are one who keeps your word. You will not fail any one of your people. You will not ever leave or abandon any one of your children. So we thank you that our hope, our future, is in you. In Jesus' name, we bless, bless your people going forward now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Until we see you next week. Say your prayers. Lord bless you. Lord keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. Amen. The Lord lift his countenance upon you every morning. And the Lord give thee peace now. Amen. 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 See you next week. Blessings.